Mrs. Wendis, when you lost your handbag, did you lose a letter as well? No. Marco, it was found in the man's pocket. You did lose it, didn't you? Yes, I did. And I asked you this before, didn't I? Yes, but you see, my husband didn't know about this it. This man was blackmailing you, wasn't he? It's no good, Margot. Tony will have to know about it now. No! It's the only thing to do. Inspector, after Mrs. Wenis lost my letter, she received these two notes. Last February? How many times have you seen this man? I've never seen him. Mr. Halliday, I'd like you to come along with us. Yes, of course. Mrs. Wendis, when you come down to the sta station to make your statement, I should like to warn you that there may be other police officers <coughs> present. Now, anything you say will be taken down and may be used in evidence. Now, never mind what you've told me so far. We'll forget all that. From now on, I want you to tell me exactly what you know about this man and exactly what happened last night. If you try to conceal anything, it may put you in a very serious position. I wish you'd explain what you mean by all this. Yes, I shall. Now, you admit that you killed this man. You say you did it in self-defense. Unfortunately, there are no witnesses, so we've only your word for that. But I heard it all, Inspector. On the telephone. And what exactly did you hear, Mr. Wendis? I heard... Well, I heard a thud. Did you hear anything to indicate that a struggle was going on? What I heard is perfectly consistent with what my wife has told me. So all you really know about the matter is what your wife has told you, isn't it? Now, you suggest that this man came in here to burgle the flat, but there is no evidence of that. There is, however, evidence that he was blackmailing you. Blackmail? It's true, Tony. You suggest that he came in by this window, and we know that he came in by this door. But he can't have got in that way. The door was locked and there were only two keys. My husband had his with him and mine was in my handbag. Here! You could have let him in. <laughs> You're not suggesting that she let him in herself. At present, that appears to be the only way that he could have entered. Don't you even believe I was attacked? How do you think I got these bruises on my throat? You could have made those bruises yourself. A silk stocking was found outside last night. It had two knots tied in it. Does this mean anything to you, Mrs. Wendis? I suppose that must have been the stocking he used. And the twin stocking was found wrapped in newspaper at the bottom of the waste paper basket. Can you explain why your attacker should do that? No. And those stockings were yours, weren't they? No. We know that they were. The heel had been darned with some silk that didn't quite match. And we found a reel of that silk in your mending basket. Tony, there was a pair of stockings in here. I've heard of police deliberately planting clues to be sure of a conviction. I just didn't think it happened in this country. His men were in here for hours last night. They could easily have taken those stockings out and done anything with them. Of course they did, and they wiped his shoes on the doormat as well. Listen, Roger, Tony Wendis here. Now listen, uh, uh, Marga was attacked like last night and a man was killed. Marga? Was she hurt? No, she's all right now, but listen, uh, the police are here now and you're, and you're not going to believe this, but they're insinuating <laughs> that she killed him intentionally. I wouldn't say that if I were you, sir. Well, that's a good one. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Now, Roger, can you come round at once to the Maida Vale Police Station? He's out right away. Thanks, old boy. Goodbye. Hey, darling, Roger will meet us at the police station. Mr. Wendis, I should advise you. Our please. lawyer will give us all the advice we need. Thank you. Here's your bag, Marco. Oh, thank you, Max.
You are coming, sir. But of course, Inspector. Yes, well, I just want. <laughs> 